Professor Richard Siegel. He is with, the, with Arkansas State University in the Department of Computer and Information Technology in the College of Business. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Professor Siegel holds a BS and MS in Mathematics, an MS in Operations Research and Statistics from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in Troy, New York, and PhD in Operations Research from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. He's been on the faculty at Texas Tech University, the University of Louisville, the University of New Hampshire, and the University of Massachusetts at Lowell in West Virginia. He has published in several professional referee journals. His research interests include data mining, text mining, web mining, database management, and mathematical modeling. His research has been funded by the U.S. Air Force and by NASA, by the Arkansas Biosciences Institute and the Arkansas Science and Technology Authority. He's a member of the editorial board of the International Journal of Data Mining, Modeling, and Management in the Open Cybernetics and Systems Journal and the Open Medical Informatics Journal. And he has served as the local arrangements chair for the 2010 Mid-South Computational Biology and Bioinformatics Society Conference. Professor Siegel's keynote address is Dimensionalities of Knowledge Discovery Using Data, Text, and Web Mining. Professor Richard Siegel. First, I want to thank uh, you for the kind introduction of my talk, which is entitled Dimensionalities of Knowledge Discovery Using Data, Text, and Web Mining. Whoops. How do, how do I go back here? Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to bring the audience up to the level of what data mining, text mining, and web mining is and then show some applications of uh, research that I've been conducting for the last several years. Okay, what is data mining? Data mining is knowledge discovery in data or databases and it's extraction of interesting information. Uh, it could be previously known or potentially useful information that from data in large databases. Alternatively, names uh, for data mining are knowledge discovery in databases, KDD, knowledge extraction, data patent analysis, data archaeology, data dredging, information harvesting, business, business intelligence, etc. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way here. A typical example in data mining is using customer purchasing patents to predict what they products they purchase and where they're placed in the store. Uh, bread and milk are obviously placed uh, at distant locations in the store, but things that are associated with each other could be located close, like flashlights and batteries. Uh, and uh, a classic example is the beer and the diaper example, where they can move the display of the, the beer next to the diapers on Thursday or Friday nights when the husbands go out to purchase uh, beers because they're things that are visual uh, and related. Uh, a related application is automatic detection of fraud, such as in credit card usage. Analysts look across huge numbers of credit card records to find deviations from normal spending patterns. Another example is uh, the use of a credit card to buy a small amount of gasoline, followed by overseas uh, plane flight. The claim is that the first purchase ten tests the card to make sure it's active. Uh, here we have a picture of data mining and knowledge discovery and patents. If you start on the bottom left, uh, you see databases. Then we have to clean the data, make sure it's complete, and then integrate the data. And so that we have a, a data warehouse. And then we have some task-relevant data. And data mining is the core of knowledge and uh, discovery process. And from that, we extract data, trying to find patents in the data. And then in the upper top, we have knowledge discovery. Uh, text mining is the discovery of computer and new previously uh, unknown information by automatically extracting information from uh, di different re um, written resources. And a key element is linking together extraction information to form new facts or hypotheses and uh, or more conventional means of information. It's also known as text categorization, text clustering concept, 
entity extraction, production of granular taxonomies. An example is uh, there were some written documents that were published in, in the 1800s or so, and they didn't know who the author of it was. But they had another document, like the Bill of Rights, and they tried to find the frequency of the terms within the original document, which they knew the author of. And if they could find the same frequency of terms in the document that was unknown to who the author was, they could make a good conjecture of who wrote the other document. Web mining is the integration of information gathered by traditional data mining methodologies and techniques with information gathered over the World Wide Web. And it's used to understand customer behavior, evaluate the effectiveness of a particular website, help quantify the success of a marketing campaign. Uh, web mining lets you look for patterns in the data through three different um, methods. Content mining, structure mining, and usage mining. Content mining is used to examine data collected by search engines and web spiders. Structural mining is to examine data related to the structure of a particular website. And usage mining is used to examine data relevant to particular users' browser as well as data gathered by forms the user may have submitted through the web transactions. And I have an example later on about hotel customer uh, uh, comments. Uh, now I'd like to talk about the background that I've done in data mining, and then I'll talk about the work that I've done in text mining and then web mining. Uh, in 2011, I co-edited a book, and I have a copy right here. I co-edited this book, Visual Analytics and Interactive Technologies, Data Text and Web Mining Applications. It was published by IGI Global in 2011, 362 pages. I co-authored it with my colleague, Quin Zhu Zhang, in my department at Arkansas State University, and May Cao is actually his wife, who's at the University of Wisconsin Superior. And uh, this is uh, the novelty of this book is, we talked about uh, large volumes of data and complex problems inspire research and computing in data, text, and web mining. And however, data, analyzing data is not sufficient. It has to be presented visually with analytical capabilities. It's a comprehensive reference on concepts, algorithms, theories, applications, software, and visualization of data mining, text mining, web mining, and computing, supercomputing. This publication provides a coherent set of related works on the state of the art of the theory and applications of mining, making it a useful resource for researchers, practitioners, professionals, and intellectuals in technical and non-technical fields. Um, and uh, some other work that I've done uh, with Dr. Zhang, uh, we published a journal article called Review of Data Text and Web Mining Software that appeared in 2010 in Cybernets, which is an international journal of cybernetics, systems, and management science. And we also have a chapter in a book. Uh, this book was a uh, book published by Springer Verlag, uh, entitled Com Commercial Data Mining Software by Dr. Zhang and myself. It's in the book Data Mining and Knowledge Discovery Handbook, edited by uh, Odin Maimon and Lair Rokash, and I said the Springer Verlag. Uh, here I have a chart of uh, different data mining software, and we looked at uh, GeneSight, uh, PolyAnalyst, SAS Enterprise Miner, and Neural Works Predicts, and I'll show some output of each of these in my presentation today. Uh, you see that uh, GeneSight is kind of narrow-minded. It's statistical analysis and cluster analysis, and Neural Works Predictors is also very specialized statistical analysis, neural networks, and self-organized maps. Polyanalyst has also decision trees, regression analysis, cluster analysis, uh, and association analysis, and so does SAS Enterprise Miner. Text analysis is in Polyanalyst, but it's in a separate package for uh, SAS Text Miner. Here we have some text mining software that uh, we looked at. We looked at Compare Suite, SAS Text Miner, Text Analyst, Visual Text, uh, Megaputer Polyanalyst, and WordStat. And we looked at uh, data preparation, data analysis, and resulting reports. And Compare Suite was only had two categories that we had. SAS Text Miner was most comprehensive of that, as well as Visual Text. And Megaputer Polyanalyst also uh, had a, most of the features. Then we looked at web mining software. Uh, we, we, Megaputer Polyanalyst also was available, uh, capable for doing web mining. We looked at SPSS Clementine, ClickTracks, and QL2. And we looked at data preparation and data analysts. And uh, ClickTracks and Clementine had most of the features. Q KL QL2 had least, and Megaputer Polyanalyst came in uh, second there. Uh, my title of my talk was today was Dimensionality of Data Mining, uh, Text Mining and Web Mining. And the novelty of the research that I've done is that I took data mining to a new dimension. 
And I did data mining of microarray databases, which means we're looking at data at the genomic or DNA level. And this had not been done before. Uh, let me just give you a picture of, uh, of some genomic d DNA. And as you see, there's immense, you know, a strand of DNA has an immense amount of data. And in biology, they take spots from gene, uh, DNA and they put it onto a glass plate. And each of these dots has an immense amount of concentration of data. And so uh, on the right-hand side here, here, oops, go back, lost my spot here. Here we go. On the right-hand side, we have two different conditions, a tested condition and a normal condition. And we can apply uh, those conditions and generate different spots on a glass plate. So essentially, we have a glass plate of microarray databases. And they're different colors because of the immense amount of different characteristics for each of these. Oops, I'm going the wrong way here. OK, so um, I presented a uh, presentation uh, at uh, other places. I'm just saying that I'm going to talk about data mining and microarray databases for bioinformatics using four selected software. And my pictures on the top are because those are the types of databases I used. I used ab abalone fish data. I used uh, forest cover data, I used human lung data, I used mushroom data. So that's why I have those different icons that are on there. Okay, let's talk about microarray databases. According to Hardiman in 2003, the use of microarray databases have revolutionized the way in biomedical research has been conducted. That high density arrays of specified DNA sequences can be fabricated onto a single glass slide or chip. Okay, what is a microarray? It's a huge collection of spots that contain massive amounts of compressed data. Microarrays have been used by researchers in life sciences for genetics because DNA contains so much information on a micro scale. Each spot of a microarray this could contain a unique DNA sequence, as I said before. Okay, here we have a picture of a machine of a microarray data capture. And uh, th this, these exp um, expression levels on what can be extracted can generate several thousands of, of genes at once. And so here's a picture of, uh, you know, the mechanisms that's, that's used to generate uh, microarray databases on a glass plate with, for further uh, testing and uh, my data mining as well. Okay. One of the uh, distinctions of the, of the data mining I did, as I said, titled my talk is dimensionalities. I'm doing the complete reverse dimensionalities that's typically used in a clinical study. In a clinical study, you could have uh, tens or hundreds of variables, and you could possibly have a thousand or up to a million cases. But in a typical genomic case, the dimensionalities are the reverse, in the sense you could have 10,000 or 100,000 variables, and only 10, you know, tens or hundreds worth of data. So the dimensionality is very intense. Okay, so in 2004, I studied an OSMIT database, which stands for Osmotic Stress Microarray Information. And I, I took repre uh, representative data for that. I figured corn data would be represented for this. And this was funded uh, to me by the Arkansas Biosciences Institute, whose uh, headquarters are on my campus, even though it serves the whole state. Uh, the software I used, I used SAS data, uh, Enterprise Miner. And the plant data that I used, I used uh, uh, approximately 100 microarray experiments performed at the University of Arizona as part of a National Science Foundation funded project named the Fundamental Genomics of Plant Stress. And representative of that could be used for biotech applications such as manufacture of plant-made pharmaceuticals or genetically modified foods. I selected corn because it's one of the most researched products in the food and, and feed system uh, and its genetic, um, genetic as well as agronomic properties are well documented. Corn is safe, stable information a medium for genetic expression. It's been shown to accumulate high levels of monoclonal antibiotics, which are proteins not achieved in other plants. And uh, the OSMIS database is available for public access on the web, and it contains about 20,000 um, experimental stress tolerances, or EST, used to produce these arrays. And they can be considered as a component of a data warehouse capable of being subjected to data mining. And the plants that are in that database are rice, barley, corn, ice plant, and arabidus. Uh, the OSMIT database, the microarray database, includes 4,000 uh, ESTs for corn, ice plant, and rice, 2,000 for barley, 9,000 for arabidus, and EST, again, is experimental stress tolerances to environmental factors such as uh, 
wind, rain, drought, I'm talking about here the, uh, the amount of salt in the atmosphere and so forth. And the data mining that I performed in 2003 is for the representative factor of salinity for the selected plant ingredient cord is represented by the plant biotech databases that can be used for biotech manufacturer biocuticals using plants. Okay, here I have a cluster proximities of, uh, of corn microarray databases taken to logarithmic too, and you see it's very intense. Um, and in 2005, I looked at mushroom data, abalone fish data. Okay, the differences between these are is that the dimensionalities of mushroom data was discrete data, and the abalone fish data was numerical data. And I used software of SAS Enterprise Miner, Neuralware, and GeneSight. Uh, the title of my paper that I published with uh, Dr. Zhang, I'm lead author, was Data Visualization and Data Mining of Continuous, Numerical, and Discrete Nominal Value of Microarray Databases for Bioinformatics. And we received one of the three highly commended paper awards for the year 2006 from Emerald uh, Journals for this paper. Okay, here we have a uh, some of the characteristics of the mushroom data, and the data include, you know, information about the cap, the gill, the stalk, the veil, the ring, et cetera. And uh, here's some, some of the research that I did. I took the results of, of the prediction phase of neural network training using NeuralWare Predict as applied to Abel and Fish data. I looked at the results of classification phase of neural network training using NeuralWare Predict as applied to Abel and Fish data. I also plotted the target versus the predicted values using neural word predict using the target value of the number of rings of the abalone fish data. Okay, here I have a picture of the predicted versus actual values of the abalone fish data. And so one is pink and one is blue, but the point of the matter is that they overlap very well. Uh, the only difference is that some of the, uh, some of the spikes are higher than the others. But Generally, the, the, the point of the matter is that the data mining that I did for this data was that it was pretty close. And again, look at the intensity of the data. Then I uh, uh, used GeneSight software uh, with, for the variables of length and height for cluster analysis, and I did a scatter plot uh, for the abalone fish data. Okay, here's the uh, window of uh, GeneSight software that I used for the cluster uh, analysis for the variables of length and height, which I've highlighted on the left-hand side there. And here's a scatter plot, as I indicated. That was for the abalone fish data. And as you can see, the regression is pretty strong. It's pretty linear. Um, then I did k-means clustering using the Euclidean distance metric for the selected variables of length and height for the abalone fish data generated by the GeneSight software. I did hierarchical clustering using the Euclidean distance uh, distance metric as generated by GeneSight, and I did principal component analysis in three dimensions, including five clusters for the abalone fish data as generated by GeneSight. So the next three pictures are respectively k-means clustering, hierarchical clustering, and the principal component analysis. Okay, here we have the uh, k-means clustering, and the first column is length, the green column is the height, those we just have two variables, but you can see the uh, intensity of the data there. But it even became more intense when I did the hierarchical clustering. Just look on the left-hand side, the hierarchical clustering, how intense those hierarchical links are. Because we're looking at DNA level. It's very, in, dimension is very intense. And I have three variables here. Of, well, there's three columns. First is length, second is diameter, and the third is height. And here we have the principal component analysis. On axis number one, I looked at uh, five different variables there, and they're color-coded respectively. Uh, then in 2006, I looked at forest cover data and human lung data, and I can. One of the differences is the dimensionality. Uh, forest cover data, I used 63,377 rows, and for human lung, lung cancer, I used about one-fourth of that, 12,600 rows. And for forest cover, I used 54 attributes, and for human lung, I used 186 attributes, which is about, uh, about three and a half times the number of attributes I used for forest cover data. Uh, the forest cover data was available from the University of California at Irvine Machine Learning Laboratory. The human lung cancer was available on the web at, by the Broad Institute, which is an institute in collaboration with MIT, Harvard, and the affiliated hospitals and the Whitehead Institute. And the software that I selected to uh, look at this data was SAS Enterprise Miner, Neural Work Predict, Megaputer Poly Analyst, and BioDiscovery GeneSight. Here I have some of the major functions for the selected software. SAS Enterprise Miner did all of them. 
decision trees, regression, neural networks, cluster analysis, and association. And so did polyanalyst. Neural, where is, is strictly neural network stuff? And gene site is, is specifically cluster analysis. They're very specialized, but they give a lot of information. Here I have a, a description of the forest cover data. Uh, and I also want to point out that I use qualitative and quantitative variables, as indicated in the data type column, the second column there. Uh, here I have a window of SAS Enterprise Miner that I uh, set up the workspace for forest cover data set. Uh, here's some of the decision trees. Later on, I'll show you some of the intensity of the decision trees. Uh, here I have uh, a self-organized map uh, for the normalized means of clusters for the forest cover data. And the clusters are on the right-hand side. Um, here I have a uh, hierarchical clustering of global variation with the Euclidean distance using gene site. This is for forest cover. Again, look at the intensity of the, uh, hier uh, the hierarchies on the left-hand side there. And I have one, two, you know, several columns there that are different for different variables. I have about seven or eight variables on the bottom there. Uh, here we have k-means clustering of the global variations for the Pearson correlation using gene site for the forest cover data. Uh, and the columns, again, represent different variables. Uh, here we have scatter plots of the actual forest cover data. And you can see the intensity of the data there as well. Uh, here I have self-organized maps for the squared Euclidean metrics using GeneSight. And again, look at the amount of information that I'm getting here uh, for the forest cover data. These are for different, different clusters. There's about uh, 25 clusters right there. OK, here we have box plots for the first 13 gene types using, uh, you know, gene types using GeneSight. And this is for the human lung data. Uh, this is human lung data. Look at the difference of the dimensionality of this data. And uh, you know, I, I have maybe 10 variables on there, but look how much more intense the human lung da data is versus the forest cover. And then the intensity of this. This is human lung. These are 25 clusters again, but again, this is even more intense than the forest cover data. This was self-organized maps using the Euclidean uh, distance. Here we have time series plots for human lung uh, cancer using gene site. Uh, here we have forest cover data. This is a link diagram for 40 soil types, soil types using a polyanalyst uh, for the forest cover data. And here we have percentile distributions of individual gene dimensions of a human lung project using polyanalyst. And this is human lung again. So the conclusions of that part of the research was that the study of the contrasts of the dimensionalities of data at the microarray level, the forest cover versus human lung, I take credit for using line software never intended to be used at the microarray level except for gene site. And the selection of the four software for that ap application is unique in the comparisons that I was able to make. Data mining of micro databases is an entirely new area. It's only existed about 10 years. And an immense amount of publications of biomedical research are now being directed in that area on the Broad Institute. We expect this area of data mining and micro databases to become an influential factor in the way data mining can be performed on for databases with these dimensionalities. Uh, in 2009, here at WMCI, I presented a paper uh, with my graduate student, Ryan Pierce, of advanced data mining of leukemia cell microarrays. And leukemia is a cancer of the blood or bone, bone marrow that's characterized by an abnormal proliferation of blood cells, usually white cells, using uh, lycocytes. Uh, microarray databases used for leukemia were HL60, Tricot, NB4, U937. And the source of the data was, again, the cancer program website of the Broad Institute, which is a collaboration of MIT, Harvard, and medical communities. HL60 is uh, human proliferative leukemia cells that has been used for laboratory research and how certain kinds of blood cells were formed. And that's from, cited from Wikipedia 2008. Microarray databases is used to describe a repository containing microarray gene expressions, and that's also cited from Wikipedia. These, uh, the Tricot cells uh, from Wikipedia says that cell, their cells used to study acute leukemia expressions of various receptors susceptible to a viral entity, particular HIV. Tricot cells, as cited by Wikipedia, are the primary uses, are, however, to determine the mechanism to differential susceptibility of cancer to drugs and radiation. Self-organized maps are an analytical tool that provide a mapping from the input space to clusters that are organized into a grid that is usually two-dimensional. And they differ from k-means clustering because k-means clustering cases are grouped together based on their Euclidean distance from each other in the input space. Self-organized maps tries to find clusters such that the two clusters are close together and the grid space have uh, seeds that are close together in the input space. And according to Taroni and et al., 
uh, from the Federation of Euro European Biochemical Societies for the analysis of gene expressions data using self-organized maps. A self-organized map is an unsupervised neural network learning algorithm which has been successfully used for the analysis of organization of large data files. Uh, here I have a list of some of the related research uh, by myself. This slide shows uh, four things that I solo authored. Uh, data mining and microarray databases of biotechnology. It's a chapter in a book, Encyclopedia of Data Warehousing and Mining. Uh, data mining and microarray databases for biotechnology. I gave a seminar at the bio, r and Bioinformatics World at Ar Arkansas Biosciences Institute lecture series. Uh, data mining and microarray databases for analysis of environmental factors in plants using cluster analysis and prediction analysis. And I did something on environmental facts of corn and maize. Here I have something that I co-authored with my graduate student, Ryan Pierce, and Dr. Zhang, uh, advanced data mining of leukemia cells, uh, micro, yeah, data mining microdebate of human lung cancer, uh, applications of neural networks and genetic algorithms for bioinformatics knowledge discovery, and data visualization, data mining microdatabases for biotechnologies. Uh, here I have a picture of some of the uh, normalized mean plots using self-organized maps for leukemia HL60. The normalized means are on the right-hand side, the blue, and it's sort of like in three different ranges there. Here I took, uh, I compared all of them, which is the blue versus the purple, specifically number 22. So there was some disparity there. Uh, here, here I took uh, all of them, the blue ones, the purple ones are a one, uh, number one, and the white ones are six, and the, the light blue is uh, number 17. And you see some disparity there here. This is for clusters one, six, and 17. Uh, here I have some time series box whisker plots, and I looked at zero hours, four hours, six, uh, five hours, and 24 hours to see how HL60 varied over time. Here I have the uh, cluster proximities from traditional clustering for HL60, Tricot, NB4, and U937. Uh, here I have uh, self-organized math for clusters 1, 16, 19, and 24 versus all the normalized means, and you see there's uh, sort of like a nonlinear relationship for the for number 24, which is the purple ones, but all the other ones were on the, on the zero mark there. So the conclusions of using self-organized maps is over clustering is that the data mining and interpreting patterns of gene expressions performed for the HL60 leukemia data set of turn, obtained by the Broad Institute. So, uh, how, how most notably, the similarities in the scale dimensions of the cluster proximities for traditional clustering compared to that of self-organized maps, as well as greater detail that's certain by the number of clusters creating utilized self-organized maps, crystallized the disparity in the results of the two methods in that paper that I published. Uh, I talked about advanced data mining techniques for leukemia cells. Uh, this was uh, an article that was published in the Journal of Systemics, Cybernetics, and Informatics in 2009. Uh, we looked at uh, leukemia data, specifically clusters 3.1 and 3.5. Uh, all of them are blue, and the purple ones are number 17. So you see some disparity there. Okay, here I'm talking about the decision trees, as I said earlier. Look at the intensity of the dimensionalities of here. I mean, I can't even read the numbers just looking at the slide here um, because there's so many branches in this decision tree. Uh, but they could be read if I, you know, blew them up. But I'm just saying the point, the point of the matter is that the data mining for the microarray databases created a very intense type of uh, situation here. It also is exemplified by decision trees. Here I have some clustering. Results using self-organized maps for HL60, Tricot, NB4, and U937 leukemia data. Uh, here I have uh, that for um, those four again in the extremities and cluster cells. And the picture on the right shows some disparity again for the purple one, which is number 17, I believe. But most of them were pretty much normalized on zero there. The advanced con uh, data mining conclusions shows that uh, Applying data mining to the HL60 data by itself led to visualization plots that had dispersed normalization means, such as shown by figures three and five, <coughs> as compared to that for the aggregation of those four leukemia data. Uh, similarly, figure four for HL60 by itself yielded, yielded four, only four clusters after applying the data mining, while figure nine uh, for the aggregated data yield, yielded double the number of clusters. Okay, now I'm talking about my research that I've done in text mining. Uh, I have... Um, Shen Lu, which is a, a, a member of the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, and Dr. Belford, who is also at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, have collaborated with me 
and we've uh, written a paper called linkage. We're working on research right now, linkage discovery within symposium, symposium proceedings, and it was published in the technical proceedings of the Six Bio Nanotox Conference uh, at Little Rock in November of uh, last fall, 2011. And that uses latent semantic analysis, or LSA, and ex expectation maximization to discover connections between papers within a symposium proceeding and then link papers along a variety of themes. Uh, Shen Lu and myself, she's lead author, have just had a paper accepted in the International Journal of Information Decision Sciences. It will be published in 2013. And the title of the paper is Linkage to Medical Records and Bioinformatics Data. We provided an algorithm called Entity Resolution for the Fuluji Center model to improve the results of some uh, semantic analysis for the identification of similar records. Uh, here we have some output of SAS TextMiner uh, for linkage and frequency of terms. And you see on the, on the bottom right there some links, and they're, they're different widths. The, the wider the width means the higher the frequency of the uh, frequency of that term, whatever it is. And so the ones on the top are very frequent, the ones on the bottom are second frequent, and the third branch are uh, less frequent of those three. Uh, I did some uh, research with uh, hotel customer comments on the web, and we extracted breakfast, and we looked at their written comments. Uh, breakfast slow, um, I can't read all of these, but the written comments are on the right-hand side there, and we extracted, we looked at the comments that we got for the keyword that we extracted for breakfast that was uh, inputted. And here we have uh, text again. Here we have microarray databases again, but we can have text descriptions for each of the microarray databases because it's so intense data, we can have <laughs> so much text, but we want to extract just some of the key words. We can do text mining to get the, the, the appropriate cells of the microarray databases that we're interested in. And we also can, when we, once we extract the, the terms that we're interested in, then we can do histogram plots to uh, exemplify the frequencies for each of those terms that we did text mining for. Uh, here we have a picture of a concept link using SAS text miner, and the, in the center the word is statistical, and on the, around that are terms that are related to the term statistical, and also the number of branches of those, but we can also rotate this thing. So if we rotate this around, we get, we get more dimensionalities of the data. So on the, on the left-hand side there, you see some additional terms there. So we, went, we, we found more granularity in the data to get more terms, text terms, that were related to that particular term. Um, here we have clustering results and of uh, text miner. And again, we're looking at uh, a hotel customer written comments such as front desk, very friendly. And we also looked at the age and gender of the, uh, of the respondents. Here we have link diagrams again. And we can connect uh, the relationship between each of these. So in other words, we have air and, and conditioning by a double arrow there, the red dots. The red dots are related. Uh, opening windows, change room, cleaner, dining, et cetera. And the uh, turquoise ones, noise and traffic, yellow tea, coffee, Doc, et cetera, so you can link the terms together, color code them as far as how they related to each other. Uh, here we have a dendrogram and concept map using WordStat, which shows another uh, technique uh, for aggregating the data and showing the relationship between uh, different concepts in text. Okay, also I told you I was going to talk about my research in web mining. Uh, Megapewter polyanalysts can be used for both text mining and web mining. So here's the workspace again for Megapewter polyanalyst. And um, again, we use the same data. So here we, here's the link diagram. Again, we, we also use for web mining. We took histogram frequency plots of, of uh, age groups and gender for the respondents. And, but we also looked at my university, which is Arkansas State University. We looked at the website of our university as far as the amount of information that they had stored on there. and so. You know, any university is in very intense now in putting things on their web, if it be for public for dissemination or for internal administration use. This was for internal administration use. And then we were able to uh, extract from that the undergraduate admission data, because uh, a lot of the applications can also be done online. So we're using web mining to extract the Admission, undergraduate admission data for my university, Arkansas State University, and then we could, you know, we could mine further and further and so forth if we wanted to. 
Uh, here we, uh, we did keyword extraction report. We looked at faculty for Arkansas State University using PolyAnalyst because there's faculty data information about that. And uh, again, here's keyword extraction for the Hustomo Hotel customer did online surveys. Uh, web mining could be used for the uh, for breakfast and, and their responses there too. Uh, SPSS Clementine, here's a workspace for SPSS Clementine, uh, which, which we use for our web mining. And uh, we looked at, um, uh, this is again for the advanced visit seg segment of data. And here we have a table of the web extracted with 251,998 records with seven different fields. Uh, here we have decision rules for determining clusters of web data. So in other words, in web mining, we can define the rules whatever way we want so we can refine the, the web mining to our unique specifications. And here we have some decision tree results in their nodes using SPSS Clementine. Um, I've also done some work with Shen Lu, and this is of 2011, last year, a statistical quality control of microarray gene expression data. The novelty of this is that we used a technique of statistical quality control in their traditional methods, which have never been used for microarray gene expression data, which is using things that are very different dimensionality of what they were tended for. Uh, typically, classical control charts have never been used for microarray gene expression data. And so we use this to find out uh, within the data with, you know, where the data within the central tendency mean, or, you know, how far were they deviant and so forth. And we had range charts for the random data for with full change of 1.5. Uh, after sampling selection and featuring selection, we generated 18 information products. We used data mining models to evaluate the quality of information products. We used the K-nearest neighbor, KNN, random forest, self-organized maps, and multi-pass LVQ. And the one with the largest precision and recall is, is in good quality. Uh, the key characteristics, how, you know, how do, we, how do we define measurements for an array containing n array elements? We assume our goal is to compare a query and reference sample, which we call R and G. The, the measurements were variable data and attribute data. The variable data of microarray gene expressions with a ratio of the ith gene of the array, which can be written as T i r sub i over G sub i. Most often, the expression data are represented by a logarithm based to the expression. And this has the advantage that it produces a continuous spectrum of values. So the attribute data of the microgene expression were precision and recall, which sort of re the same thing as specificity, uh, which are, these are biology uh, terms for the similar context. And, um, uh, so here we have uh, nine different charts here for the total data. We're using quality control charts. And we use different p-values and different fold change values. So you see that some were very close. The, the full change of 1.5 in the upper right was very close between the two columns, while a p-value 0.05 was, was a big difference between on the left-hand side for, for uh, data 1 through 8. Uh, full change of 2.0 and p-value of 0.01 on the bottom middle was very close. And then we looked at the balanced data. Uh, the total data was balanced and unbalanced data, but then we looked at the balanced data specifically and we saw that a uh, full change of 1.5 and p-value of 0.05 on the right-hand side was very close. And then we, if we use 0.01, then they were not so close. So we were able to, uh, the novelty of the research is that we were using uh, statistical quality control techniques for micro databases and able to determine which full changes and p-values were the best for our data. Uh, performance according to the experimental results, we can see that in the data set, the total full change set equal to 2.0 and p-value 0.01, both as precision and recall are greater than the average and stable. Uh, this research by Lou and Segal used the total data quality process to improve the quality of microarray and gene expression data, define key characteristics and measurements, analyze data quality with Western Electric rules, improve data quality with data mining tools. And so this concludes my presentation, and I hope I'm able to give you an overview of the uh, dimensionalities of knowledge discovery using data mining, text mining, and web mining. Uh, I've done a lot of research in this area, and as I said, I have a book that was published in 2011, so maybe you probably can get a good price on it. Amazon.com and other places are selling it way less than what it is. And so uh, I leave the floor open for any questions that you may have. <laughs>